Haddonfield, how are we doing this morning? Has, has anybody seen Jess? She like, is she gonna like pop out of a closet somewhere? No, she's not. Jess is on vacation this morning and I'm grateful that she gets some time with her family. She's home, she's probably watching, so hi Jess. Um, so I am super grateful to be up here with this crew this morning. I'm also grateful that there's not a keyboard in front of me because y'all don't wanna hear me do that. Um, so we're going to stand this morning, if we would, please, if you choose to sit, go right ahead. Uh, we're going to start with a song called You Are Good. Uh, it is a song that I was in a conference about a week and a half ago with a special friend of a couple of us here, a guy named Mark Miller, and he led like a jam session. Like Anybody that was in the room just started playing this song, and I was like, I think I need to sing this. And then Jess was like, hey, you want to lead next week? I was like, all right. So we're going to start with You Are Good because it's a special one to me. And, and I think Mark kind of put it on my heart. So let's go, Michael. One, two, three. And it's, it's fun and it's upbeat and it's exciting. So here we go. We're going to sing. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Sing people. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you.
It is wonderful to be in worship with you. Welcome here today. And I do want to say God is good. As When I walk into this space and I see different faces, different generations coming in from different places, and some of you are new and some of you have been here for a long time, you know, what makes this a community is God's Spirit. We haven't come just because we have one thing in common or we all want to accomplish the same thing other than worship the one God that gave us life. And I just want you to know that that God loves you and is at working in your life. And you are welcome in the space just as you are, however you are, from wherever you are. And this pastor is grateful for you. Today, we welcome you in worship. I'm very excited that Pastor G. Sen is preaching. She's going to land the plane of our Romans uh, series in the month of July. We've been preaching on Romans, and we're going to finish with the end of uh, chapter 8, and I'm just very excited for that. If, when we get to the sermon, you'll see that on page 6, we have sermon notes to help you follow along. Um, and just a couple announcements as we are in worship today. Uh, for folks who are worshiping with us online, we're grateful for you. Uh, we have our announcements all on one web page, and that's haddonfieldumc.org slash now. For folks in the room, if you want to follow along on your phone, there's a QR code in the back of the chairs that gives you the same info. Today, our announcements are very few, and they're simple. One, Vacation Bible School. We have, I've, I've been told, we have over 80 volunteers. That's pretty awesome, right? Last year we had 70 some. This year we have over 80. So thank you so much if you're one of those who volunteered. We have about 150 kids, roughly, who will be participating in two weeks in VBS. So we are still collecting supplies and money for supplies on page uh, nine, you'll, you'll see a QR code and a link if you want to buy them on Amazon or at least just find a list of what we're looking for. You also can donate money to help us to purchase some of those supplies. And then when it gets time for the week before uh, Bible school, next week, we will be decorating August 7th through the 13th. And we do need a lot of help. We're going to be decorating this, most of this building. So if you see a time slot that you could come and donate a couple hours, that would be a huge help. That's on page 9. And then the last thing I want to invite us to support is that every year, this time of year, we collect backpack supplies for our mission partners in Camden County and Gloucester County to make sure that as many kids as possible go back to school with the supplies that they need. So on page 11, I believe, uh, on page 10, actually, you'll see that we're collecting uh, notebooks, folders, pencils, crayons, glue sticks, erasers, highlighters, lunch boxes, hand sanitizers, individual supply boxes, and whiteboard markers. I know these are things that we're going to buy for our kids, for my kids at home, and so I would encourage you to think about buying them for someone else's kids so that they may be blessed to go back to school. Let's, uh, let's just take a moment and pause and give God thanks for this space, and then we'll continue to worship in song. Loving God, I thank you for each person in this room and for each person who's watching on their phone or iPad or, or tablet or computer or TV or wherever they may be. God, you have called us to be beloved community in this moment. And your spirit is the one bind that keeps us together, the tie that binds us all together. Oh God, we pray that that spirit will move and will speak to us, will take our burdens from us, will encourage us, will strengthen us, cause us to be bold. God, we thank you for your presence. May your spirit fall afresh on us and move among us, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Friends, if you would, I invite you to stand and let's continue to sing. All right. So did we get that whole school shopping list? We've all got it memorized, right? Good, because I don't, and I'm grateful that it's in a program, in a bulletin somewhere. Um, so we're going to move on to a song called Greater that is going to be led by someone to my left, your right. Um, I just have a question. Moselle, how far did you travel to come to worship today? 30 minutes. Okay, Chuck's laughing because he knows what, my answer, what that answer was supposed to be. Moselle, where do you live when you're not living home with your parents? I live in Brooklyn. Oh, so did you come from Brooklyn to worship this morning? No. Oh, Moselle. She's killing me. Y'all, I am so grateful for the once a month or so that Moselle is able to be in worship with us and takes the opportunity to come home and be here and even more that I get to lead with Moselle this morning. Um, and she's going to, after we do a fun little intro, she's going to take uh, greater and we're going to have some fun. So let's go. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
Michael went to start verse 3. I heard all these voices, and I'm like, we're not supposed to be singing. Hey, that's the congregation. What a gift you all are this morning to be participating and be with us this morning. I'm so grateful. Amen.
very grateful for an amazing group of lay folks who partner together to lead in ministry. And we're grateful for Jessica, who often, who always offers us leadership, but uh, is away today, and, and we pray for her. We come to a, a space in our service in which we collectively connect to God. Um, when I was younger, I often wondered what my job was when someone else prayed because I could not pay attention to the words they were saying. Does anyone ever have that problem? You know, I feel like if I am not listening to every prayer, pray, word that a prayer is saying, I feel somehow maybe I'm not doing my job. Well, I want to relieve you of that. Because in Romans 8, the passage that Pastor Jason is going to preach on today and we've been looking at, it says that sometimes we don't have the words and the Spirit groans in us. You know, all we need to do is show up, just be here, and just say, okay, God, right? Okay, God, this is all I've got today. I'm a little anxious, I'm a little concerned, I'm upset, I'm tired, I'm happy. Whatever it is, just be present and God's Spirit will do the rest. Amen? So I want to hear today, what are some of the things, to call out what you want to be named in prayer. And I'll, I'll say it for the folks on camera and then we'll join our hearts together. What do you want to pray for today? Daughters travel for a safe journey. So a successful job for Sister Emily in California. Peace in Ukraine. Successful surgery for son's wisdom teeth. Well, we have a prayer list on page 7 in the bulletin that our folks like you, maybe yourself, have included some names. Let's just go to God and, and think about those and think about whatever it is that you want to name but aren't ready to or just have chosen not to. Let's pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for this beloved community. Just a, just a tiny little portion of your family, of God, of everything, every living creature that you have created, you love and call us your own. God, sometimes we get in our own way with our own worries and concerns and even our own selfishness from time to time. God, we just pray that you will level that playing field because you just greet us with your love today. God, you, you have compassion on those who hurt. You heal those who are sick. God, we pray for those who mourn loss, death, illness, loss of job, loss of community, loss of relationship. But God, we know that your spirit is always growing something new. In the midst of grief and sorrow and stress, God, you are moving to create new possibilities, new healing, reconciliation. God, we pray that we might be open to what you are doing today, that we might feel it, that we might take a risk, that we might take a step in the direction of whatever you're doing, even though it's unknown and uncomfortable. Oh God, you know better than we do. And so we pray that you will lead us in right paths this day. I thank you for this community and all those prayers that we have prayed. We pray for peace in the Ukraine, an ache that seems so greater, so much greater than any person can feel, fill or stop or heal. But God, we pray that you will be at work in lives and hearts and protect lives. Oh God, we pray that you will bring an end to this violence and help those who know better, oh God, stand up and to heal those who have been hurt and wounded and care for those who have been orphaned and, and left without homes, those who are refugees. We pray that those who know your son and know you will be a part of the solution. And God, we pray for each of the names, for a daughter, for a sister, for a son, for our communities, oh God. And we pray for this church in the coming year that we may be closer to one another and that we may live out our love for you and our love for neighbor. Teach us, oh God, to step out of our comfort zones, to connect, to welcome, and to serve. God, we thank you for your presence, for your power, for your spirit. 
And we join you in prayer today with the words that Jesus taught us so long ago as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. The word of God for us today is the letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 26 through 39. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn within the large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those who he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. It is so good to see you and worship with you today. Shall we go to God in prayer to center ourselves? Loving God, thank you so much for the gift of your word. We open our hearts and mind and we welcome your spirit to speak to us, inspire us, and teach us. Use me to deliver your good news for all people this time. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. What is your favorite day of the week? Oh, yeah. Saturday. 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 Yeah. How about Friday? Thursday. Thursday. Wow, it's rare. Hmm? Anyone whose free favorite is Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> and what is your least favorite? Monday. Yeah, many of you say Monday. Yeah. I love Sunday, but... I used to experience the Monday blues on Sunday evening while working in a company in South Korea. I used to feel so tired and sad on Sunday evening, even though I had been in a good mood and had really good time over the weekend, as I was overwhelmed by worries and anxiety at work for the next day. I have heard many others speak of the same symptoms which seems to be a shared experience in South Korea, in the U.S., maybe many more countries. 
The Monday blues might not be a medical diagnosis. However, it is real in our experiences. I found one of the interesting surveys to support the Monday blues. It's about what America's favorite and least favorite day of the week is. Of course, Saturday and Fridays are the favorite days of the week for 64% of people. How about the least favorite? Yes, it's Mondays. <laughs> and I am astounded by its high percentage. The red one, the first one uh, in the red side is least favorite. And it says Monday at 58% of people choose Mondays as their least favorite. And Tuesdays are the second least favorite, but it drops to 12%, significantly drops down. Interestingly, Sundays are the third least popular at 9%. I think it reflects the Monday blues. And when I found one t-shirt in South Korea visiting my family a couple of years ago, I couldn't resist to buy it. On its back, the question is printed, what day is it, what day is it today? The options only available, atypical. <laughs> Monday, 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 Friday, Saturday, and pre-Monday. <laughs> I can laugh at it now. However, there was a time I really felt like it was real. Like I felt every week, Monday, 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 Friday, Saturday, and pre-Monday. My favorite day of the week is Sunday, and it comes and goes in a weekly cycle. And the good part is that another Sunday is coming, but not so good part is that I have to wait Monday through Saturday to welcome another Sunday. It reflects on our human condition that we constantly have to say goodbye to one thing in life and move on to the next, even in the most natural things like growing up. Separation seems to be a genuine qualm in our lives. One cannot become an adult without leaving their childhood behind. Parents raise their children with the full expectations that they will go off into the world, stepping out on their own one day. Every choice we make along the way separates us from another possible road we could have taken. We cannot do everything, so we must exclude something when we do anything. At the very heart of being human is separation from those things and the people we love. And such exclusion and separation are a great source of pain in our human life. I love today's scripture in Romans 8, 26 through 39, as Lisa uh, led us to, read us today. It is one of the favorites of many in the church. When we often hear it at funerals, it commemorates us in times of loss and grief. It is beautiful and comforting, but at the same time, it is also troubling because it raises the question of God's election, whether God predestines only some people to be saved. That's why it has been the catalyst for disagreement in the church throughout time and history. So keeping this in, in our mind, let's delve deeper into the text for a moment. In Romans, Paul teaches about the law of the spirit compared to the law of the flesh. As Pastor Chris taught us last week, the word body is neutral, while the word flesh conveys sinful nature, referring to rebellious human nature in the New Testament. Life under the law of the flesh is the life to follow our own human nature and desire, being selfish in our actions, thoughts, or words, that separates us from God. And in theological terms, anything that separates us from God is called sin. But God broke a barrier and restored fellowship with us. We are set free from its power and price in Christ by faith. Because of what God has done for us through Jesus, through his death and life, death, and resurrection. We check out our shame and guilt at the door, entering into the presence of the Spirit. 
because there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. We are adopted into God's family, and this is the good news for all that we are called to share. In the assurance of the intercession of the Spirit, we find a sense of freedom because that means we do not need to pretend to be someone else, to be a better, wiser, more gifted, or more successful person. We can come and stand before God as we are by God's grace, and we are welcomed. We find a sense of security and belonging deeply rooted in this love in the presence of the Spirit. And I often think about how human languages are limited. There is no language or a combination of multiple languages can be enough to articulate what's going on in our hearts. If a language were a kind of a container, there is none big enough, deep enough, and wide enough to contain and convey what we think and what we feel. Probably that's why we have various types of the arts in paintings, music, dancing, or many other forms to express ourselves, and we can be connected through them. When our hearts are too heavy to find a word, the good news is the spirit groans for us with sighs too deep for words. I experienced just today calling God Jesus' name, taking a deep breath, and sitting still in silence can bring the peace of mind and let go of my anxiety. The pain and grief and any loss is real and painfully real and unimaginable. However, the power of God's love, God's name, Jesus' name, the power of the Spirit is also real in our experiences because the Spirit intercedes and delivers our hearts to God. And we don't need a fancy word or even a single word to be in fellowship with God with the help of the Spirit. And I love verse 28, and I pray with it a lot. But it also baffles me. It says, We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. What's the subject here? Is the subject God or all things? Is God working with those who love him or for those who love him or simply for good? How dare we say all things work together for good to those amid deep pain and suffering? We don't want to misuse this verse by discounting the depth of human pain by coming to a quick conclusion but we often make this mistake. Here, God is the subject. On a smaller scale, even when life doesn't go as we planned or hoped for, God actively accomplishes the redemption of all things in creation. God is on the move by creating something new in us, justifying us and working with us. Paul's focus is on the move of God, the work of God. Not because of who we are or what we have done, but because of who God is and what God has done. We've convinced that God, God will work and God will make all things work together for good for those who love him. So our part is to stay, to stay in love with God through the good times or bad that requires our trust. And another challenge of this text is the understanding of predestination. As soon as we hear the word predestination, it is so easy to close ourselves. It is inevitable to ask who is predestined to be saved or not. Am I the chosen one or not? Can I fully trust God who chooses only a selective group of people? This question of the exclusivity of God's election might naturally come from our human limitation as we constantly experience separation and exclusion in our lives. We naturally want to decide who is in and who is out. And exclusivity is one of the successful marketing strategies to, for many companies to attract people and keep their customers loyal to their brand. 
However, I, I cannot find a single clue pointing to the exclusivity of God's elect for salvation. God created everyone in God's image in the beginning. God foreknows everyone our, in our mother's womb. God knows us better than ourselves or anyone else. Even God knows exactly how many hairs I have in my head. I don't know how many. I'm not available. I'm not able to count it because I lose some. <laughs> I gain some each and every day. It's impossible for us to do that. God predestined everyone to be conformed to the image of Christ. And God calls everyone to follow Jesus. God initiates and invites us. And we say yes and joyfully follow God's way of love. There is no zero sum in God's kingdom. God's grace abounds and God's grace is more than enough to go around everyone. The God whom I found, whom I experienced, and whom I believed in is the God of all people, even including myself, in God's large family. As God loves you and me, God loves the person next to us at school, at home, at workplace in our communities. Yes, we keep falling up short and making mistakes because we are human, not God. As gravity pulls everything to the center of the earth, human nature pulls our focus to ourselves. As no one on earth can escape from the forces of gravity, no one in the world can escape from the law of the flesh. That's why we need God's grace. Everyone needs God's grace every step of the way. Salvation is not a one and done event. It doesn't end with our baptism. It's a continuous journey to follow the way of Jesus with the help of the Holy Spirit. Then Paul asks several rhetorical questions. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? Who will? Who is condemned? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? The answers to all these questions are the same. No one, absolutely nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ. How powerful and hopeful a proclamation. Is there anyone who has siblings? Yeah, many of you. I have two siblings as well. And growing up with two sisters as a middle child, I liked to follow my older sister in whatever she did and wherever she went. But my older sister and, and, my older sister and I are only one and a half or two years apart. So we are like a friend these days. But as a child, two years made a deep big differences. And my younger sister and I always called her big sister while growing up. Sometimes she was annoyed by us, like when we tried to join her friend's birthday party, and she hardly said no. But in times of trouble with friends, we used to defend ourselves in our older sister's name. I bragged about having a big sister in my family who would be on my side. And I used to say to my friend, I have a big sister, watch out, and I can bring her right now. <laughs> and Paul's word, if God is for us, who is against us? It sounds like he's bragging about having the big, good father, the one who will be on his side no matter what. In reality, however, we experience a tension between human experience and divine promise. Does it mean God is on your side or my side in conflict? Does it mean that God is on theirs or ours? Behind these questions, there is an assumption that God has to choose one or the other, like humans. But it is profound that no human being is mentioned in Paul's long list of what can possibly separate us from God. Not his opponent who tried to kill him, 
that those who had a different understanding and opinions about what it means to be a church and Christians. Human division shouldn't be a reason to separate us from the love of God in Christ. We are sisters and brothers in God's large family, regardless of, of any of our differences in skin color, political stances, different language, gender identity, ethnicity, and nationality. Nothing can separate us from the love of God because God's love transcends all human limitations. God's spirit unites us as one body, and Jesus is our head of the body and calls us to follow him for the common mission of loving God and loving others. God is for you and for me and for all God's children. God is neither on your side nor mine. We are on God's side, and we are in God's team. I will not let anything or anyone take this truth away from me on my journey because that is a firm foundation of who I am and whom, who God is. In the moment of trials and tribulations, we don't need the whole universe to be on our side. We just need one person who can be with us. If we can just have just one person who listens to us, who understands us, encourages us, and trusts us, and prays for us, we can get through the challenging and difficult times. I don't know where you are on your journey, but I know that we all have the one, the Spirit who is compassionate for us, cries for us, and cries with us, and prays we decide to deep for words. Even in seemingly hopeless times, hope and despair are not too far away from each other. There is only one, a thin line between them. And when we can see a new possibility in God's greater story, hope can be ignited in our hearts and lives for eternity. And we can be the person to deliver this hope to someone who desperately needs to hear. It sounds impossible for humans. However, it is possible for God. Faith is not about knowing, but about living. God's love becomes real in our experiences. And our job is to continue to open ourselves to the work of the Spirit by asking, by searching, by knocking, by reflecting on this love in our lives. God teams up with us, and we are not alone. And we are on God's side and belong to God's big family. Amen. There is hardly a more beautiful way to speak about the hidden promise of even the smallest gift than the image of a mustard seed, so tiny, yet holding so much possibility. We are gifts from God. Perhaps we feel small, but we hold the promise of God's awesome power at work within us. We share our gifts now so we can build a home for those who come here seeking refuge, acceptance, and love. Let us gather our gifts together now and offer them in thanks and praise. The ushers will come around to collect your offerings, or you can give electronically at haddonfieldumc.org or by text. There's joy for the morning, sinner be still. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken.
All right, friends, we have reached the point of our closing song. We've checked everything else off the list, everything is done. But the worship, I'm so grateful that it never stops. Whether it's here, whether it's home, in your car, wherever you choose to worship. Um, I am grateful for the opportunity to be in worship with you this morning. Kim's going to begin our closing song called Our God Saves. Why don't you stand and join us? Ah, that part. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come. We'll gather together to lift up your name, to call on your Savior, to fall on your grace. Join me in the name of the Father. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we we'll gather together to lift up your name, to call on your Savior, to fall on your grace. Hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down. each and every day in the times of good or bad the spirit knows our weaknesses and helps our weaknesses the spirit intercedes for us we decide to deep for words let us deeply rooted and grounded in this love and let us stay in this love with God and Jesus our Christ and the peace of the Holy Spirit and be the church in this hurting world amen
that Sunday, Chris, but okay.